Hello, how you doing? It's Mr. Do The Math here, and today we're going to talk about the characteristics of a quadratic function. All right, today is uh, Teachers Dress Like Students Day, so I am student. All right, and so we're going to talk about some quadratic functions. All right, so a quadratic function is a second degree, yeah, polynomial. It's a second degree polynomial. So it's a polynomial who's raised to the second. The, ex, the, the biggest exponent is two, right? Um, the graphs of the polynomial um, always produce that U-shaped thing, and we call it a parabola, parabola, right? All right, so here are the key components. We're going to uh, look at the parabola, and we're going to talk about the key components derived from the parent function f of x equals x squared, all right? So if we was to start here with the vertex, so if we have a, a vertex like so, the key components, all right? And we kind of talked about this already, but the very, very bottom of the parabola, the very, very top of the parabola is called the vertex, right? All right, this is the middle, vertex. I spelled it right, the vertex, go ahead. Vertex is the middle point of the vertex is middle point of a parabola, right? And so in the vertex, you have all these other things, all these ancillary things, right? So going down the middle of the vertex, right, is called the axis of symmetry. It's also known as the X of the vertex, right? It's the X of, it's the, X of the vertex. So the axis of the symmetry runs directly through the middle of the whole parabola, right? And it's also known as the x value of the vertex, okay? Corresponding parts. So in geometry right now, they're learning about corresponding sides and corresponding angles. Corresponding means the same in a different place, right? So a corresponding part would be um, a point on the opposite side of this axis of symmetry. So this axis of symmetry kind of serves as a mirror, right? So if this is two spaces from the axis of symmetry to the right, his corresponding part would be two spaces to the left, okay? So these are corresponding points, right? So they're exactly the same on the opposite side of the axis of symmetry, okay? So um, we got two forms of a quadratic formula uh, function that we'll look at, right? The first one is the vertex form, which is what we saw, all right? So B form looks like this, A times X minus H squared plus K, right? Vertex form, it's called vertex form because vertex is found in the equation, right? The H is the X of the vertex, the K serves as the Y of the vertex, right? And you already know inside the parentheses is opposites, right? So if it's negative, it's actually a positive X. If it's positive, it's actually a negative X. Okay, and so we got vertex form, and then we have standard form. Standard form is uh, is the equation we see when we factor, right? When we was doing our multiply add factorization and stuff like that. So it looks like this, and we talked about this already. Ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are numbers; they're whole numbers, all right? So the a term always has the x squared. The B term always has the X, and the C term is always the number by itself, okay? And, and so here, uh, the other thing I want you to keep in mind is the C is also known as the Y-intercept, right? So there is, a, there is a point that you absolutely know every time you see uh, a, quadratic, uh, a quadratic equation in standard form. You always got this point here, the Y-intercept, okay? So... And then the A is still the A. This A is that A. That's the same thing. Okay? So now we're going to talk about graphing using a quadratic uh, form. And then we're going to look at graphing using the standard form. All right? So how to graph. How how to graph. Right? How to graph, right? First thing you want to do is you want to find the vertex. 
right? Finding a vertex can be a myriad of things, depending on the equation, right? If it's in vertex form, you find a vertex, and then uh, you, the vertex is given to you, right? But if it's not in vertex form, we have to uh, have to do some special things. So we'll call this uh, 1A, right? And so in standard form, we'd use, uh, we'll find the X, we have to find the X and the Y of the vertex, right? The X of the vertex, you have to use negative B over 2A, and the Y of the vertex, you have to substitute negative, y, negative B over 2A, so it'd be F of negative B over 2A, and that's what we're gonna look at in a second. All right, so um, why don't we, let's look at the first equation here. Number one, we're gonna graph, we're just gonna sketch it here because I don't have a grid here, two times X minus three squared minus one, okay? So this is in vertex form, okay? What is H in this problem? Negative three. Is it negative three? Yeah. It says three, H is three, and the K is negative one. Right? Because if it's negative on the inside, it's actually positive. So the vertex is 3, negative 1. Okay? So we can plot that first point there. Right? We can plot uh, 3, positive 3, negative 1, which is just the guesstimate. Right? The next thing we can do is after we found the vertex, right, um, we can use A to find our point, find our next point, P-O-N-C, all right? So A can serve as a slope, A is like the slope. So A here is two, right, it's positive two, so it's like going up two, to the right and left, one, right? So we're gonna go up two, one, two, to the right one, and to the left one. Okay, and then we can just make our swoop, right? It's a rounded out situation right here, all right? It's not a V. All right, so we got our vertex. Now, the, the vertex is three, negative one. This right here, the X of the vertex, the X of the vertex is the axis of symmetry. So that's the, the middle. It's going right down the middle of your, uh, your graph, right? And then the y of the vertex, which is what we're gonna talk about real fast because we're gonna jump, right? The y of the vertex is known as your maximum or minimum point, right? Maximum or minimum point basically means it's gonna be the lowest point of your graph or the highest point of your graph, depending on what the a value is, okay? So if the a is greater than, if it's positive, right? So it's greater than zero, you will have a minimum point, much like this, right? So this is the lowest point of your parabola because it just continues to go on and on and on up, right? But if the A is negative, you'll have a maximum value, right? Because it'll look something like this, right? So it's the, the maximum, the highest point, okay? So this is max, right? Opening down, this is min, right? This is a minimum, opening up. Comprende? We good so far? Give me a head now, let me know we good. All right, cool. Now, um, uh, let's look at this. Let's look at the second one. The second equation is given in standard form, all right? You have y equals 2x squared plus 12x plus 14, all right? So that's in standard form. 14 is the y-intercept, so if you were to graph this right away, you know a point's going to go through. This parallel is going to go through the 14 um, on the y-axis, all right? So, First things first, we have to find our vertex. Vertex is not given right away because it's not a vertex form, so we have to find the x of the vertex, then the y of the vertex, all right? So let's list A, B, and C. What's A, what's B, what's C here? A is two, A is two. B is 12, C is 14. Very good, all right? Now, we're gonna find the x of the vertex. That's the first thing you do. So it's negative B over two A, negative B, Negative 12 over 2 times 2. Over 2a. Alright? Very good. So that's negative 12 over 4, three. which is three. negative 3. So the x of the vertex is negative 3, right? And then we're going to take 
negative three and we're gonna plug it into the function. We're gonna substitute it for x. So it'll be two times negative three squared plus 12 times negative three plus 14. Okay, then from here we do the math, right? Do the math. It wasn't funny. <laughs> All right, so negative three squared is nine. Nine times two is 18. 12 times negative three. Oh, hold on. Yeah, negative 36. All right, plus 14. All right. 18 minus 36 is negative 18, plus 14 gives you negative four. So the y of the vertex equals negative four, okay? So if we were to graph this one, I will, let me erase this one right here. All right, let's make some space. Make some space. All right, so to graph this one, same thing, right? The vertex is negative three, negative four, so it's negative three, one, two, three, negative four. All right, it's negative three, negative four, right? Now, A equals two. So if you go up two, one, two over one, right? On both sides, right? And that's what our graph is gonna look like. And this is gonna keep going till it gets to 14, right? So the axis of symmetry, axis of symmetry, is going to be negative three. And is this a maximum or a minimum? Minimum. minimum. It's a minimum, right? The minimum value is negative four, right? Negative three, negative four, okay? And so basically these are all the characteristics of a quadratic function, right? You have your vertex. The vertex tells you the axis of symmetry and it tells you your maximum or minimum value. You have a minimal value if the A is positive. You have a maximum value if the A is negative. All right? If you haven't already, don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time, Mr. Do the Math out.